This video presentation is brought to you by the Pro Mathematics Academy. Welcome back to another video presentation brought to you in part by the Pro Mathematics Academy. In this video, we'll be looking at set operators and the Venn diagram, right? And before we can jump right into the Venn diagram, we have to first define the universal set, right? And here I have for you the definition, right? The universal set describes the largest group considered when solving problems and is represented by the rectangle on a Venn diagram, all right? And an important note here is that usually the Venn diagram, usually the universal set is given to you, okay? Right, so what is a Venn diagram? A Venn diagram is a pictorial view, right? That was invented by John Venn and is used to visualize the relationships that exists or the relationship between sets, okay? So usually, we have many sets, there are many relationships, but if we have two sets only, then we can look at the relationship, all right? So here, we recognize that we have the rectangle here, right? And we use this capital U to represent the universal set, right? An important note to make here is that U is usually used to represent the universal set. Other sets are represented by circles, all right? So here we have the set A, and the set A is represented by a circle. Here, I will shade in this section. All right, so all those elements that are in A are usually written in the purple section right there. All right, and then we move on to define what we call the complement of a set. All right, so here, when we talk about the complement of a set, it is usually with respect to the universal set. Okay, so in my definition, I'll start by saying where the universal set is clearly defined. The complement is given by the set of all elements that are not in the set, okay, but are still in the universal set, okay? So they're not in the set that you are trying to find the complement of, but they are in the universal set, all right? So next we look at how to denote the complement of a set, all right? And the complement is denoted by tilde A or A overline, okay? So here we have an overline above our A, or we are overlining A, okay? So these are the two ways how we denote the complement of a set A in this context. So we're looking at A, and this is how we would denote the complement of A, right? On our Venn diagram, we simply look at all the elements which are outside of the set, all right? All those elements which are outside of A, but they are still in the universal set. And that's how we denote our complement. So here, let's look at a numerical example, right? If we're given the set U equals 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, and C is equal to 2, 7, 11, A is equal to 3, 5, 13, and B is equal to 2, 3, how can we find the complement of A? All right, the complement of A would be all those elements that are still inside of the universal set, but they are not in A, okay? So 2, 7, and 11. These would be the elements which are not in A, but they are inside of the universal set. Let's see if we can write down the complement for B, all right? So here we would start at 5, 7, 11, and 13. And all of these elements would represent what is not in B, but is still in the universal set. Likewise, we can write down the complement of C, right? And that is given by 3, 5, 13. Okay? So an important note to make here is that when I add the elements in A to the elements, the number of elements in the complement, I should end up with the number of elements in the universal set, okay? So this is a rule of thumb that we can use to help guide us as we try to write down our complements, all right? Moving right along, we now examine what we call the intersection of two sets, okay? So when we talk about the intersection, this is a set operator, all right? So the intersection of two sets 
is the set of all elements that are in both sets, all right? So when we think about a set A and a set B, we want to look at all those elements which are common to A and common to B, okay? And that's given by this section right here, right? This section is what we call the intersection, all right? Notice that the intersection is denoted by A upside down U, or you can think of it as an upside down U, but it's really the intersection symbol, right? And we read this as A intersection B, not A intersect B, okay? Some persons like to say A intersect B, but what they really mean is A intersection B, all right? So let's look at another numerical example, right? Taking our sets that we previously wrote down, we have our universal set, which is given from before, C, A, and B, and now it's asking us to write down the intersection for A and B, right? So we look for the elements in A that are also in B. So here we see that three is the only element that is common. Here, I'm looking in the set A, and I'm looking in the set C, right? And I'm trying to find what is common. So two, seven, 11, nothing is common. So if nothing is common, then we have our empty set. Are you guys seeing that? Awesome. So now we look at B and C to find something that is common, right? And when we look at both sets, we see that two is common. So here we have the set containing two. And here, if we had more elements being common to both sets, then we would write down all those elements in the intersection. But here, only one element seems to be common. So therefore, the intersection has in only one element. Notice that the null set can be a the null set can be an answer here, all right? So when two sets do not have an intersection, then the intersection is equal to the null set. That is very important, all right? Let's move along to our next set operator, which is called the union, right? So once we're looking at sets, we have to come across the union and we have to come across the intersection, all right? So the union of two sets is a set of all elements that are in either set, all right? And that is very ambiguous to think about it if you're just learning this for the first time. So, we're saying that the union is a set of all elements that are in either set, all right? So, consider two sets A and B. The union is denoted by A union B, right? <laughs> That's how we read it, okay? So, as we see this symbol, we should recognize that this is saying A union B, all right? Notice that when we are describing the union on our Venn diagram, right, we have all the elements which are in A, right? All the elements in the intersection and all the elements in B. All right. So the union is basically a combined set that has elements in A, elements in B, and elements in the intersection. A combined set having elements in A, elements in B, and elements in the intersection. Okay. And if you think about it, I might have repeated myself. All right. But because we are learning this for the first time, right, that's okay. So here I continue with a numerical example, right, to write down this um, union for our given sets that we previously defined, right? So now we have our union C, A, and B, right? And now we are asked to write down the union for A and B. So I'll write down my elements in A, 3, 5, and 13. Right, and then I go over to B and I look and I see two. Right, notice I didn't write three again because I already wrote three. All right, so A union C now, I'll start by writing the elements in A, three, five, 13, and now I go over to C, two, seven, 11. Right, notice this time I just combined A and C. All right, there wasn't any element that was common, so I didn't have to worry about rewriting anything. B union C now is given by, I'm going to start by writing down B, 2, 3. Now I go over to C. I start at 7 and 11. Notice that I didn't write 2 because I already wrote 2. Okay? So now we have defined the union operator. That is it for this video. Please remember to hit the notification bell, like, share, and subscribe for future post notification.